the backseat driver. In 1959, Mabel Shinnery went to the cemetery to visit the grave of her mother along with her husband. She took some photos of the gravesite and then turned and took this picture of her husband sitting alone in the car's passenger seat. The film was developed and came out, somebody sitting in the back seat wearing sunglasses clear as day. Miss Shinnery swore that the back seat was completely empty and it had to be none other than her mother whose gravesite she was standing on. But what do you think? If you're there, I want you to leave my house. Nah, fuck this. I'm staying downstairs. Do whatever it wants. Have you ever heard this nursery rhyme and wondered why there was a baby hanging in a tree? Unfortunately, the origins of this one are probably darker than you ever even thought. Welcome to part three of nursery rhymes that are scarier than you might have thought. The origins of this nursery rhyme are thought to be with King James II and Mary of Modena. It is thought that the pair's son was not actually their biological son and was just brought into the birthing room in order to pass off as their son. You know, so they can ensure a Roman Catholic heir to the throne and all of that. Apparently in these times, cradles were sometimes hung in trees so that they could be softly rocked by the breeze, but then a thief came and snatched a baby out of one of these cradles for the king and the queen and the cradle fell, baby and all. So basically this weird nursery rhyme is actually about stealing babies, so it's still weird. Make sure you guys like and follow for a part four. Go so weasel. Someone please explain to me what this thing is right here. What is that? And also, I don't know if you guys have seen this other thing, this mermaid creature thing. Scary story sent by you. Do not watch this if you are home alone. This is another story from Toronto, Canada, sent by one of my followers. When the sender of this story was young, his school had late starts on Wednesdays. He was in his room when everyone else in his house left for work. He heard noises coming from downstairs and thought a family member had returned home. But things got very strange. Suddenly, he heard a huge stomp and the sound of someone running up the stairs. The steps were so loud that it sounded like a bowling ball being dropped on each step. He was so scared he just froze with fear behind the door. He was able to call his aunt who lived across the street. She came over and checked the house, but there was no one else there. Years later, the sender of this story spoke with his mother about the incident. She had also had paranormal encounters at the house, so she called a priest to investigate. They looked around the house and out in the garden they found the cause of the issue. Someone had buried three witch totems to curse their property. Y'all want to see something creepy? Where did the man in the white shirt go? The man in glasses was confused. The story behind this creepy painting is guaranteed to scare you. It was painted by a man named Charles Scudder. He's pictured right here. And it was painted at the notorious Corpsewood Manor in Georgia. In 1982, Charles and his partner Joe were killed by these two men while they were in their house and they decorated their home with loads of satanic paraphernalia and other occult objects, including creepy paintings like this one and this one. And now back to this creepy painting. In the months before the murders, Charles painted a self-portrait after his partner Joe had a bad nightmare where he was murdered. In the portrait, Charles sits gagged, bound, and he has five bullet wounds in his head. And that is exactly how he would go on to die in Corpsewood Manor just a short time after he painted the painting. Bound, gagged, and shot five times in the head. If you want to hear the full story of the Corpsewood Manor murders, the bizarre things that happened in that house in the woods, and the ghost stories that surround the property, to this day, go listen to the newest episode of Murder in America, the podcast that I co-host with my fiance. Scary past life memories. Now, anyone who spent more than five minutes with anyone younger than the age of four knows that they can spin some pretty crazy tales, including unicorns and dragons, whatever. But sometimes it seems like children have a paranormal awareness that we as adults just can't see. Tina Marie was in her car getting ready to pick up her daughter when her son started to recount strange stories of his past life. He tells a story about how his real mom died and that Tina was his new mom. He told her a scarily accurate depiction of his old parents who he said, 
died and then he missed them. His story never changed and Tina had absolute goosebumps. What was so scary about the story was his conviction and how specific and unwavering it was. If you want to see the whole thing, check out the video below. And of course, like and follow for more. Tawari was known as India's top paranormal investigator. Tawari even founded the Indian Paranormal Society. But his wife said a ghost was haunting him for a very long time. Back in July 2016, she heard a loud scream from the bathroom. And when she opened the door, he was found dead. No doctor was able to find the cause of death. What do you think happened to Tawari? Is it pretty? Well, it's obviously you. It wasn't me, it was you. <laughs> get out, get out, get out, get out. It's essentially green, it uh, reduces the effect or matches the effect of the fluorescent light. Can you imagine having a strange entity follow you all your life? But you can never see it, only the people around you can. Well, that was how it was for a woman named Emily Saget in the 1800s. This woman was said to have a doppelganger follow close behind her for almost all of her life. It cost her over 19 jobs. Her most notable struggle with the doppelganger was when she became a teacher in an elite boarding school in 1846. Her student's first encounter with her doppelganger was when she was writing on the chalkboard. Another version of her appeared right next to her and was mimicking her movements but wasn't holding chalk. There were also other times where she would be sitting and eating and her doppelganger would be standing behind her and moving her hands like she was but not holding any utensils. People also said the more clear her doppelganger was, the more pale and sickly she looked. There's even one instance where she left the classroom and her doppelganger stayed and just stared at her students. Let me know if you want more doppelganger stories in the comments. Why have I never seen this before? Me as his father, Charlie Bothell. Charlie, we're getting reports that your son has been found in your basement. Sir? Check your basement? I check my basement. The FBI check my basement. The Detroit police check. So Charlie Bothell was reported missing, but found like a week and a half later in the parents' basement. And Nancy Grace broke it to him on national television. He eventually went to try and sue her, but his guilty plea for child abuse and neglect really doesn't help his case at all. It was seen in front of a national he audience. Acting. How could your son be alive in your basement? Uh, 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 <sighs> now... This is why you should always trust your gut. In the early 1970s, a college student decided to hitchhike his way home after class. A car pulls up, a man offers him a ride, and he climbs in. As soon as the car started moving, the student felt totally uneasy, like something was wrong, but he couldn't quite place it. Without saying anything, he waited till the next time they slowed down and he flung the door open and ran away. Two years later, he's flicking through TV channels when he comes across this special interview with a death row inmate, and it's just the audio recording, so he hears the interviewer ask the inmate, why did you remove all the door handles inside of your car? The man just goes, well, the first time I tried to kill someone, I picked up a college hitchhiker who got smart at some point and jumped out of my car. So, lesson learned, remove all the door handles. When they showed his picture, the student knew immediately that he was supposed to be the first victim of John Wayne Gacy, a.k.a. the killer clown, who had killed over 30 men and boys in his clown room and stuffed them into his basement. Out of all the cemeteries in the United States that I have ever been to or investigated, this one gives me the creepiest feel by far. Sitting just outside the town of Paso Robles, California and Templeton, it's Adelaide, a town that no longer exists, that the schoolhouse and the cemetery seem to be frozen in time. I really want to tell you guys that the ghost who steals your keys is the least of your problems if you go into the cemetery. Buddy had just gotten a new battery in his car when we took these photos, and all of a sudden, trying to get back into his car, we couldn't find his keys for 45 minutes. Then we found the keys and his car would not start no matter how hard we tried. It finally clicked on and we were having electrical issues for the next 40 minutes down the road. 
The main legend of this cemetery is the ghost of Charlotte Sutton, aka the Pink Lady. She is said to roam around 10 p.m. at night. She is the wife of a minister who committed suicide at 19. She reportedly brings her children flowers. From the stuff I have caught in this cemetery in the past and the level of intelligence, I can tell you that this is not a normal haunting or a normal cemetery by any means. I always tell people to take caution and tread lightly when entering this place. It is a great investigation, but it will definitely leave you with a chill down your spine. Soon I will be telling more stories about this location and sharing some of the evidence with you, but until then, stay tuned and keep it spooky. This redditor is scared her dog might be possessed by a skinwalker. And here's a creepy skinwalker dream she's been having lately. For backstory, I used to live out in a small town I'll call Harris Town. I lived in the schoolhouse with my parents, two younger siblings, and my younger cousin whom we adopted. The house was cold and very old and was actually demolished a short time after we left. It sat at the bottom of a tall hill across the road from a field that was often full of sheep. We moved away when I was about 13 and I never really thought about the house too much. It always had a weird vibe, an energy I couldn't trust. I told my sister that I thought maybe a man had died in the house and his spirit was still there because it was definitely a masculine energy. But she just shrugged me off and told me to stop scaring her. About seven years have passed and I was lying in bed and fell asleep pretty quickly. I don't normally have very clear dreams, but this one was very eerie. Watch part two. Part two of this Redditor's skinwalker dream. I was sitting on my front porch back in Harris and looking over a field of sheep. They were pretty tightly packed in their herd and all standing around on the dry earth. And as I was staring out at the sheep, one caught my eye. She was looking at me head on and the more I looked at her, the more the image started to change. It was a man's face, but it was contorted. It had sharp rows of teeth and glowing red eyes. It was honestly like looking into a portal to hell. He stood on all fours, a sheepskin draped over his shoulder while his form changed back and forth. A sheep some of the time or a terrifying face peeking out of the flock. He was smiling his hideously evil smile staring right at me saying, you can't escape me. And then I woke up and to be honest, I haven't felt right since. And now, Bo is acting strange.